Today I want to take a look at Angular apps in SharePoint, and particularly Summit's blog post here about using the Angular CLI, which I'm a big fan. Uh, on the left, I have downloaded the project and started it up with ng-serve running on port 4200. We'll go ahead and let Webpack do the bundling and minification combining all the TypeScript modules. Over here we have the source code and a couple of things of note over here under app. Our module has a service, SP service, which has a dependency on at PMP slash PMP and another import for RxJS observable where a promise is being returned to a component and then a web title is being displayed. It's a simple but important example of how to talk to SharePoint services using the PMPJS library, which we see being imported over here in the SharePoint service right there. Now, going through the blog post, I sat down and tried to do the same steps on a brand new project. Do ng new sp-ng. Fair enough, created a project, ng-serve-o. So this is making a brand new Angular CLI project with the current version. Of course, the project I was just showing a moment ago, the Hello World uh, from Summit's post, that comes from GitHub and the um, kind of older build versions for some of the packages. So I decided to try a new one and the port is already in use. So let's go ahead and close our hello world and we're going to try to open a brand new project. So here we see the welcome to sp-ng running on localhost 4200. The project is successfully running. This is a simple ng new with the latest Angular CLI. So I'm going to go ahead and break out of that and open up VS Code to this brand new project from Angular CLI. And over here we have the reference original project. Now, one thing I wanted to look at, uh, of course, we have a lot of things going on, but we're going to walk through the instructions from the blog post. So the first thing is an NPM install for SP REST proxy, which we're going to add as a dev dependency with dash dash save dev. Go ahead and let that project install. Excellent. OK, so with that installed, we can flip over to VS Code with our new project. We see an environment TS file created. We have production. We've got a web on that where we might do a real SharePoint tenant, which I can go ahead and put in my personal tenant. And then over here, uh, well, that's actually going to be for environment prod. Open that one up. Put that down. Cool. For the other one, we can go ahead and put, um, yeah, they've got local host 8080. That's fine. We can do some things with that if needed and host a local SharePoint instance. So with that set up, we have our kind of, and by the way, this is for SP page uh, context info, kind of the global variable about where to host the REST APIs. It's a really cool proxy. I'm, I'm a big fan of that project as well, and I'm, I'm glad that's in here. So let's go ahead and do npm install with the at PMP dependencies. Again, dash dash save, so it's saving it local. Excellent, so that's installed. And then we want to make a new Angular service. So for that, we do ng dash g dash s sp service. So the g space s is generate service. We give it a name of sp service, spins up a couple files for us. We go over here, check out our file outline. This is the hello world reference project. This is our newly created project. So there's the spec testing. Here's the actual project itself. So here we need to add a few uh, items from the, the blog post. So we've got a couple of import statements to accommodate. So I'll put a few placeholders for that. We're going to import um, from Angular common HTTP at Angular common HTTP, cool. And the item we're importing is HTTP client. Excellent. We are going to import injectable from Angular Core. Well, wait, we already have that one on there. OK, observable is going to come from RxJSRx. All right, I'm going to say observable. 
And I will even change these up to be in the same order in case that matters at all. Two more, we're gonna import lowercase environment from dot dot environments environment <clears throat> at PMP SP SP and web. Okay, the injectable, we'll go ahead and clear out the parameters there. We're going to take a constructor and add a private HTTP from type HTTP client. <clears throat> That's our constructor. Fair enough. We'll add a method, get web title. It is an observable of type any. There it is. Return. Um, and this will be observable dot from promise web dot get. <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of typing up the same dependencies that we already had. And yeah, go ahead and save that. So I haven't yet used the service in a component, haven't done anything more than, than just add the, the service based on the instructions. And when I get over here to ng serve, I'm afraid instead of a, a welcome screen, we're going to see an error. And so we come over here and run ng serve, and we get this odd message that initializers are not allowed in ambient contexts. And honestly, I don't really know what that means. Kind of a little bit of newer area for me. So I went ahead and put the two projects side by side for some troubleshooting and tried to understand any, any differences in the working project versus the non-working one. And I really can't tell much apart other than the service name is longer on the right hand side. I think the other components are pretty much spot on. I even would go through and take this and quite literally copy paste it over and then attempt the ng serve again. And then we can try the ng serve again. So here I can kind of cancel out this ng serve. We see a building modules. And the initializer are not allowed message. It came up cannot find module rxjs compat. rxjs compat. Interesting. Now I think what this comes down to is that I have newer versions of the different dependencies, the different modules. And so one thing to compare would be the package JSON files from the working and not working projects. So on the left we have the working sample project and on the right we have the newer one. If we look at our dev dependencies for both, we'll see the Angular CLI on the left was 1.7 but it's 6.2 for the latest build. That's very different. <clears throat> Coming down here, SharePoint REST Proxy 2.5.6 versus 2.7, not terribly different. Um, going through a few of the other ones, RxJS 6.2 versus 5.6. I think this is a big one, and that's maybe what's creating the difference. Uh, the PMP SP is 1.2 instead of 1.0. I, I mean, PMP SP, that doesn't look terribly different with, with large version change. I think for me, the Angular CLI going from 1 to 6 and the uh, REST uh, and the RxJS going from version 5 to 6, I think these are the two big differences that are really making it happen. CLI 1 with RX 5 versus CLI 6 with RX 6. Something has happened to change RxJS in a big way, and when I follow the same steps, it's raising this error message. So in doing a little bit of troubleshooting, a few of the things that I did try already were to go ahead and sort of do this differently with observable and RX. Uh, that there is an observable from RxJS, kind of only at the root level. And I've heard that sometimes people want to import to and from, reading about these messages on Stack Overflow, and that the from promise notation may have changed to simply the word from as a shorthand way of creating things. 
It says two is never utilized, but that's okay. So now if we do ng serve with kind of changing up these two lines of code here to maybe better match the newer RxJS, I was hoping that might move it forward. Unfortunately, I get the same message on at PMP SP search that initializers are not allowed in ambient context uh, and then has no exported member to. Well, okay, that's fine. We can leave it at observable and from, but I, I really don't think that changes anything. I, I still get the same initializers are not allowed. So while this service looks better, there's no red squigglies or any complaints. Um, the same the same error seems to, to persist. Yep, so that's kind of where the error message is stuck at the moment, is the ng serve coming back with initializers are not allowed. And then here we have a service that looks good and really haven't done anything with a component yet. That's still the hello world system default. The only thing I've done is create a service which has a dependency on RxJS and the at PMPSP to try to create a new web constant. And I think this is a very clean service, very simple. It's a great example and, and use case to learn by, but I can't quite figure out why it's not running in the newer build of Angular and RxJS. So any ideas are welcome. Feel free to leave a comment in the blog post. I wanted to show some of the troubleshooting steps and kind of the process of taking a GitHub project and trying to create a new copy uh, from scratch. Thanks for watching.